Hey everyone, welcome to Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling. Thank you for tuning in for another episode. Uh, on this one, it's a reboot. Um, one of my first episodes I think I did on cassettes was Def Leppard. And in between filming the episode, or after the episode originally played, I got their 2015 album on cassette, so I tacked that on. I think that was only on the Facebook page. But anyway, I got a few more things, a couple more things to add to that, so I thought I'd just do a, a refreshed version of my Def Leppard cassettes. And um, nothing really rare to talk about here, but these are just the versions of the cassettes that I have. First album, On For The Night. This is a U.S. cassette on Mercury. This was a reissue that was probably done, it says here, 1986. And um, yeah, anytime you see ones that look like that, I've seen Kiss Unmasked and a bunch of... Uh, Polygram albums in the States that kind of have that red font to them, not not the actual uh, band font. And the fact that it says 1986 on this, I'll, I'll talk about uh, that a little bit later, not too far from now, just some the way that uh, think people can interpret things. This is what the cassette itself looks like, pretty common. A lot of my old Rush tapes look like that. Uh, next up, 1981, one of my favorite Def Leppard albums, just love it. High and Dry. This is a 1981 issue of it, because there were two issues. Uh, this is a Canadian Columbia House issue on Mercury. And that is significant. I'll explain why that is. This is what the tape looks like. It's kind of uh, yellowed over time. Very minimal credits. This had something spilled on it, I would say. These old, any of these old uh, tapes, records, eight tracks, whatever, they all have stories to tell for sure. So, uh, after Pyromania comes out, which I'm just about to get to, of course, 1984, High and Dry was reissued with uh, Me and My Wine, which had previously just been a B-side and a remix of Bring It On The Heartbreak. This is the first version of this that I got, and it's the typical Polygram QC10, quality as a name, and uh, this is what this version looks like. It's actually on Vertigo. There's the tape itself. I like the blue color they use on this. Pretty much the same credits, just reprinted. So this says uh, 1981, if you look there close, is 1981 and 1984. So back in, uh, I'm gonna say, well, when I was in grade nine, so this was the 1988-89 school year. Def Leppard were at their peak. A lot of people were into Def Leppard. And I knew a guy that thought that the order of Def Leppard's albums went Pyromania, High and Dry, On Through the Night, and Hysteria. And I said, you know, so that's interesting. Said, it's not, but why do you think that? And he said, because, well, Pyromania came out in 83, High and Dry says 84 on it, On Through the Night says 86 on it, and Hysteria is 87. So, so I explained, no, they're reissues, and this is how it actually goes. And there's a big gap between um, this third and fourth. But it's just interesting because, you know, Pre-internet, if you didn't buy rock magazines on a regular basis, you had no, you had to make do with what what was the information that was given to you by what you purchased. So I can understand coming to that conclusion. Speaking of Pyromania, of course, it was the game-changing album. This is my copy. It's a probably a '90s issue, uh, U.S. issue on Mercury. One of the things that marks it primarily as a U.S. issue is the fact that it's not like a cream-colored cassette. It's actually clear. Hardly anything in it for credits. Uh, the Canadian version of Pyromania was interesting because it actually listed more credits and it had um, had the lyrics to photograph. And reading, I remember, you know, looking through the credits of Pyromania and, and seeing, you know, Pete Willis was out of the band by this point, but his uh, songwriting is pretty much, I think almost every song in Pyromania and the Canadian uh, version of that let me know that. Next up, Hysteria, 1987. Um, this had at least two Canadian pressings, probably more, but two different looking that I know, the different looking pressings that I'm aware of. Still on Vertigo. Vertigo, Mercury, they're all polygram companies. Just Vertigo is a UK company, and it's interesting, Canada's ties to the UK, they sort of followed suit. I think eventually they, they would just issue them on Mercury as well. So, I mean, I have... <laughs> Of all the old cassettes that I've had, I've probably poured through the credits of this one more than any other. 
there was a lot to read. For, for an album that didn't have the lyrics inside of it, there was a lot to take in, a lot of information. Of course, there's the famous story about Life at the Top, uh, the order form for the Animal Instinct book, which my friend Matt has, I don't actually have. But when I first got this cassette, it was just, uh, it was a black cassette with gold lettering on it. And this is in the, um, I think it's the original issue with the sticker on it. And the first time I noticed that was Bon Jovi, Slippery and Wet, same thing. Came out, had a red sticker on it, and then the next issue was just a black cassette with uh, gold lettering on it. Of course, I mean, Hysteria was such a massive album. All of the singles, and with those singles, all of the rare B-sides. It introduced things I'd never heard of before, like extended EPs. Uh, I did I, I did have the Bon Jovi uh, Wanted Dead or Alive EP, but it didn't have anything different on it. It just had an acoustic version and a live version of that song, which was cool. But Def Leppard, you know, you started reading there all these songs like Tear It Down, I Want to Be Your Hero, and Ride Into the Sun. It's like, I want to hear those songs. I want to know what those songs sound like. And um, we did an extended episode on Hysteria and all of the singles back in 2015, if you want to search that out on Tim's Final Confession. So that kind of gives you the whole story about the collecting of those. But I remember in the spring of 89 that uh, someone said Def Leppard had a new album out. Well, I knew they didn't have a new album out. I said, well, this person saw something. So I remember that, you know, for a long time, the only record store we had in, in Woodstock was Sam the Record Man, which was great, and I bought a lot of tapes there. But an a as opened up in our mall, and I went up, and sure enough, I found one of these. This is, it's not a cassette single, but it's an EP. Oh, the cassette single, I think, looked like this. This is the Rocket Extended Play cassette, uh, Canadian version on Vertigo. And I was very excited to get this. So I said, well, this must have been what they were talking about. It's not a new album. And it had the Lunar Mix of Rocket, which if you know anything about the band, the single version, the video, the version that's in the video, the way that it starts, the middle section, is very different from the album version. It's shorter. It's kind of more compact. And that wasn't available on Hysteria Cassette. Well, it's here in an extended version and the single version. There's a live version of Women, which appeared on the In the Round, In Your Face home video, which hadn't been released at the time that this came out. And there was also a very cool live version of Rock of Ages. And in the middle of that, they break into this medley of classic rock songs, a lot of which I heard for the first time in this medley. They did uh, Not Fade Away by the Rolling Stones, Come Together by the Beatles. Um, Oh, uh, just slipping my mind out. Uh, come together, yeah. Radar Love, Golden Earring, Whole Lot of Love, Led Zeppelin, and then they went back into Rock of Ages. So this was uh, this brings back some fun memories here. It was just a, something a little bit extra to have while you while you were waiting for their next album. This had an order form in it for the Hysteria home video or Historia home video, sorry. Which again, we talk about all those home videos on the Hysteria video. Picture of the band, a little write up about what they were doing. And it, yes, of course, it was a long wait. 1992, finally, we saw the fifth Def Leppard album, Adrenalize. This is a Canadian version. Uh, still on Vertigo at this point. I remember this was one of the first albums that I bought on CD as soon as it came out without first having it on cassette. And I don't know if there was another issue of this. All the copies of it I've seen look like this. Kind of similar in makeup to Hysteria, well, the album is, and the packaging as well. Of course, they were taking pictures as a four-piece. Steve Clark had sadly passed away. There was an update to the life at the top um, right up. And yeah, that's Adrenalize for you. But a year, year and a half after that, they followed up which with, with what I think is still a pretty cool collection of songs. I mentioned all of their B-sides. They had yet to find a home on an album. They pretty much did most of them here. This is retroactive, and uh, there's the logo that's kind of faded and blue on this cassette. Uh, Hugh Syme did this artwork. I think it's the only time he did artwork for Def Leppard. Uh, Alice Cooper did a similar idea for this for his album Dada, with the optical illusion. And this was, by now they were using their Bludgeon Rafola, their own imprint which is pretty cool. They've, they've had it for years. And this is a Canadian cassette. It's a little bit faded. And even though some of the mixes of these songs were in altered form, it was good to have stuff like Ride Into the Sun, uh, Ring of Fire, 
you know, all in one place. And also there were songs that I'd never heard before, like Desert Song, Fractured Love. Um, one of the really cool things about this, being a Canadian rock fan, is their version of She's Too Tough, which is a Joe Elliott song, so it's basically a Def Leppard song, but I knew it because Helix did it in 1987. Def Leppard's version is on here, and they actually mentioned uh, Helix in here, which I thought was pretty cool. Next up in 1995, Vault, the first Def Leppard's hit collection. This is a Canadian version. By now it was on Mercury, not Vertigo anymore. A lot of songs on this album. That's what the cassette looks like. And they used a, like a flimsier cardboard, so it tended to do this, which I was never a big fan of. I like the write-up in this album, the comments from the band members on each of the songs, and the liner notes, which were written, I believe, by Peter Mensch, one of their then managers. I learned some things from this. I learned how, you know, they'd know, for instance, they'd noticed a spike in sales on the High and Dry album because it started to sell in Lowell, Massachusetts, where they'd never even toured, and they found out later when MTV was on the air in Lowell, Massachusetts. So that was the power of uh, video marketing back then. The next Def Leppard album is not one that you see on cassette all the time. Kind of a controversial album in their career, of course, is Slang from 1996. This is a Canadian copy on Mercury. Still using the dark colored cassettes. That was about to change. Um, I have tried and tried and tried valiantly over the years to really get into this album because to this very day the band members all speak highly of this album and I do like some of the songs on it but I've just never been able to embrace it as a whole. It's extremely dark and it was extremely of the times. Uh, the best thing I can say about the slang era is that I did see this tour in Moncton and even though it really wasn't that well attended this, the band sounded fantastic. Next up was a true return to form for Def Leppard. I love this album so much. 1999's Euphoria. Uh, this was them doing what they do best. They had promises off of this. One of my favorite Def Leppard songs. It just instantly became a classic. It was like the love child of uh, Armageddon and Photograph. And it just, it ticked off all the boxes of what I would ever want to hear on a Def Leppard song and album. Uh, not everything on this album, of course, measures up to that song. But there are a lot of just... Fine, fine, fine songs on here. And this is a Canadian cassette. They were um, going for a little different look here. Kind of, they look more like, a, it's kind of like a Duran Duran uh, fashion sense on this. But uh, this album did fairly well for them. Didn't really bring them back into mainstream. I remember being very, very uh, frustrated at the time with sort of mainstream radio because um, Promises was just tailor-made to be played on the radio and cranked up and a lot of retro stuff was happening. A lot of radio stations were starting to play a lot of 80s songs again and of course Def Leppard had so many they were playing them thinking they could throw Promises in there so easily and uh, I think a lot of people would be like, what, that's a new song? I gotta have that. But it didn't happen. Um, I'm missing a few. There was a few that were not released in North America. I know X came out in various parts of the world and I'm guessing uh, their uh, 2004 Best Of did, uh, which only just didn't come out in North America. We got the Rock of Ages package instead. Um, their Yeah! Covers album probably came out on cassette. The only other thing I've got to show you is in 2015, uh, they released a self-titled album, brand new album. I really, really liked it. I dedicated an episode to it when it first came out, and I was excited to get it on cassette. So here it is on EAR Music. It's a European copy. And I think I talked about this before. What I found was very strange about this is that the tabs on the side of this cassette, shine it in the light there, are still there. They're unbroken, which means you could record over this cassette if you had the right equipment. I don't know why anybody ever want to do that. Okay, so there's the pictures and some credits. That's what I've got from Def Leppard. I know there's lots of EPs out there. I'd be interested to see what uh, you folks out there have. Does anybody watching... From across the pond, if you've got any cassettes that I didn't feature here, let's uh, let's see them. Let's uh, let's hear about them. Thanks for watching Tim's Final Confessions.